The following content was made using purely vocals. No musical instruments were harmed during the making of this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hey, wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May peace and blessings be upon His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to In The Mix with DJ Halal bringing you today from IOK Institute of Knowledge. Shout out to IOK for sponsoring us today, mashallah ta'ala. And today, we got an excellent show for you. I felt completely, you know, chill and relaxed with our guest that we had on the show today. We had brother Hamza Abdullah, ex-NFL player and a humble individual. Mashallah, may Allah bless him, man. I mean, we chatted about you know, what life is right now for him, what life was like back then in the NFL. And, you know, we also talked about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was a very, subhanAllah, you know, down-to-earth style of interviewing and, and discussion that we have. So I'm looking forward to that. And by the way, big shout-out to the brothers and sisters who are on our Facebook and social media. We got a lot of positive feedback, particularly about our last show that we did uh, with Brother uh, Hussam Alou. So check that out if you missed that, inshallah ta'ala. And every other Thursday, you're going to be getting a DJ Halal in the mix with DJ Halal show. Now today, we got a special reminder of the day, which is actually a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which the approximation, the approximate words, the wording of this hadith is where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, None of you truly believes until he or she loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And the scholars have said about this is that you could still be a Muslim, right? You could still be a believer and you, you, you might not want for this brother or sister what you want for yourself, you know, but your belief becomes at a higher level. It becomes more perfected when you start to want for other people, what, what you, for your brother or sister, what you actually want for yourself. That if somebody is going through a tough time and you wish that you know things would have been this way, that you would have had more money or that someone would have, someone would have came to your rescue, then when you see that person, you're like, dude, like, you know, wouldn't I want that? Wouldn't I want to do that for him or for her? And you actually take your belief to another level by wanting for your brother or sister what you want for yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who want for our brothers what we want for ourselves. Amin. With that said, today's show, Brother Hamza Abdullah in the mix. Let's check it out. Alhamdulillah. Welcome back. To in the mix with DJ Halal, DJ, 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 DJ Halal, and today DJ the Halal. guest on the show, my brother from another mother, Hamza Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. How you doing? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Just, you know, just got finished dinner, just put the children to bed, so, you know, I'm good. Alhamdulillah. The children to bed, I mean, that's the... That's probably a challenge. It's no, I mean, it's no joke. Huh? No, it's no joke. And then now I have four children. So two, you know, my older two, they can get things done by themselves. But the younger two, they require a little bit more attention. You have to read them books. You have to sing them songs. So, I mean, you have to do the whole the whole show for them, man. It takes a while. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I bet. I mean, I, I know like my sister and, and, and my brother-in-law, they have two kids oh, and they're just they're just a year apart. Yeah. But. I mean, I spend one day with them, and my mind is. <laughs> Children bring something else out of you. You, it, it's, it's you. You don't really become a man 
until you have children of your own. You know, it's good to be an uncle. It's good to be a brother or sister. But once you realize that, hey, this little person looks up to you, uh, you know, they're, you're responsible for them. They depend on you every single thing. You say, okay, well, you know, all the fun stuff that I used to do, all the this and the that, I'm sh setting an example for my children. So it, it makes you step your game up a little bit. I see. So would you say that, I mean, you said you use the word man, mm -hmm. right? It makes you a man. But what about, um, like for myself, I'm single mm -hmm. and a lot of the brothers were looking to get married. Would you say that that process of getting married is where you become a man or is it what leads you into becoming a man when you have a, when you have children? I think the entire I think it's it's the it's the entire game plan. You know, you say, OK, you know, I'm a single brother. I'm a handsome brother. You know, I, I have a good job or I'm going to school. How do I have all these things going for me? And you think that's really important when it goes into finding a wife. But when you're looking for your wife, you have to think years beyond, you know, because this sister, she's going to be the mother to your child. She's going to be the first teacher to your child. She's going to comfort you when you have a bad day at work, mm. when you get fired, you know. And, and <laughs> no one gets fired. I mean, to but, that. <laughs> but, you know, I've been fired. I've been fired three times. And when you come home, you didn't think about the girl who was, oh, man, you know, she had a nice laugh. No, you want someone who's a strong sister, someone who, when you go home, you can feed your feelings into her, and she's not going to chew them up and spit them out. You know, she's going to take them, take you, take hold of you, you know, and be a good mother, be a good uh, partner. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have to think about all these things when you're looking for a wife. That's true. And you know what? Like, it's funny because nowadays, like, and – I'll just say what I've seen is a lot of the brothers, <laughs> <laughs> they want this thing called a trophy wife, right? There's no such thing. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> one of the sheikhs said, if you want a trophy wife, just just go to Kinko's, have them cut out like this cardboard cut mm -hmm. out and walk around with it, right? Mm -hmm. So what, do you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? It's funny, too, because I have younger brothers who are looking to get married. Alhamdulillah, one of my brothers just got married. Mashallah. But, you know, we had to go through the whole thing of reality versus perception perception versus reality and what you see online instagram twitter facebook sometimes that can be perception that's not reality you know you see a you know you see a brother with a strong beard sisters like mashallah you see a sister with the niqab mashallah Allahu uh. alam on who these people are you know when you when you speak to them when you see them and you know people have to have goals and aspirations and things like that so you know i may have a nice smile but if I have a nice smile and I don't make my prayers, I don't read the Quran, I don't want for my brother what I want for myself, you know, that's bad traits for a husband, you know, for a partner. So I think nowadays, you know, it's tougher with the social media aspect of it. And there's different pressures about getting married. And I think, you know, there's reasons to get married and there's reasons to kind of stay away from it. But I think you have to take it all in and see the perception versus the reality and say, you know, is this person going to lead me to al akhirah or is this person going to lead me somewhere else? SubhanAllah. That's deep. MashaAllah. And usually what I do on the show is at the end, we will ask speakers or the guests to talk about w w the Prophet wasallam and how they take examples from his life wasallam and apply it to theirs. So I want to ask you in the beginning, with everything that you've gone through in your life, um, how has the Prophet Sallallahu affected you as a role model? I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. SubhanAllah, that's a very deep question. And one thing that I think about um, constantly, because just the other day I was in the Costco parking lot and it was time for Salat. And I was like, man, I need to make my Salat. And I was there, so I pulled out my Salat rug and I made Salat in the parking lot. And then as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, you know, I am in a different part of town. You know, someone could come and harass me. You know, I felt people stopping, staring, doing all these different things. So I'm thinking about, you know, my safety. But then I thought about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, being in sujood in front of the Kaaba and getting things thrown at him, rocks thrown at him, camel intestines poured on him, you know, people beating him and things like that. And I said, you know, that's this has been done before the precedent has already been set for a muslim and a muslim advocate and ambassador you know if you're muslim be muslim 100 percent. and it just really it really grounded me to say you know i'm 
you know, I'm I'm peanuts compared to what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was and what he went through for Islam, you know. Now Islam has been established and, you know, I'm not the only person. You know, there aren't people, you know, actively trying to kill me as they were at that time. So, you know, I just say alhamdulillah that, you know, we have a great role model in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I think everyone, every one of us can study just a little bit of his life and try to... Uh, uh, try to replicate a little bit of that. Subhanallah, that's that's amazing. When you were, you know, playing in the NFL, your life was drastically different. I would assume than it is <laughs> right now, right? But I remember seeing this this uh, movie, this documentary that was made about you and and your brother Hussein, and it showed how you guys went to Hajj. I shot, man. So many of us have not been to Hajj. What was that like? And could you describe some of the emotions you felt particularly when you s when you saw the house of Allah? Ooh, that's a that's a very heavy question. And one thing that you get whenever whenever you come back from Hajj or from from Umrah, every, the question everyone wants to know is how was it? Uh, you know, especially for the ones who hasn't who haven't been. So you know, when I hadn't been, you know, and I was thinking about going, I would ask people, you know, how was it? And everyone would kind of take a pause and say, "Man." <laughs> Because it's like it leaves you speechless. There's you can't really put into words what Hajj and what Umrah is. And for me, growing up in Pomona, California, and for my brother Hussein and for my older brother Abbas who also went, it was it was more than a dream come true. Because for us, seeing the Kaaba, you know, we had the pictures on the wall, we had the portraits, we had the the World Encyclopedia where we can open it up and look at the Kaaba there. Mm -hmm. But to see it with your own eyes, to touch the black stone with your own hands, to kneel down uh, 10 feet from the Kaaba, you know, to pray behind Maqam Ibrahim, uh, to do Sa'i, to, to stone the Jamarat, you know, those things that you read about, that you envisioned the Prophet Ibrahim salam, doing, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it gives me chills just <laughs> thinking about it. I can it. feel it. Man, it's, subhanAllah, it's, it's something that you have to experience. I I see why a lot tells everyone to go at least once because it's something that you can't really put into words what it means. Mm -hmm. But you know the people whenever you can tell Hajis, you you just get a feel, you know, and you you know you experience what I experience, right. and it's something where you know when you just have that ihram on, you know, you don't have the expensive clothes, the expensive shoes, you know, the expensive jewelry and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just you. Your two white sheets and Allah. That's it, and it's such a beautiful and serene feeling that, inshallah, everyone can go and mm -hmm. experience it, and inshallah, Allah accepts from everyone. I mean, Subhanallah. So, with that said, we're gonna be right back after this quick commercial break. Alhamdulillah, welcome back to In the Mix with DJ Halal here. We got my brother Hamza Abdullah, mashallah. Um, okay, so you, you touched upon Hajj, how that was like, and I'll say the same thing. Like, it's it's hard to describe it. I went in 2012. MashaAllah. the land. Um, I remember the first time I saw the Kaaba. Like, I just, I looked at it, and I started to cry. And my hmm. mom's like, well, you know, are you okay? And, <laughs> and my, breathe, my breathing yes. started to change. Yeah. yeah. And that was the first time in my life where I, where I lost my breath. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So it, <laughs> It was it, it was quite a change from my normal mm -hmm. my normal life, and talking about changes from from our, our normal life or our current life and how things used to be, um, what is it like now that you are removed from the NFL and you live a a different lifestyle? Um, what's that experience like for you? To be honest with you, it's been difficult. Um, I'm actually in the works right now of pinning my story. Uh, I'm writing a book about my transition Mashallah. from the NFL to, as we call it, civilian life. Because that's what it feels like. It feels like a war veteran who's thrown back, thrown back home and there's no real guidance or blueprint as to what he's supposed to do. You know, for NFL players, there's, n there's no one really to tell your coach you to say, hey, you know, You've been this great NFL player, now transition into doing everyday lives, you know, to be a stay-at-home dad or to work in this arena or to do these different things. 
because this is something that we've geared our entire life to, you know, yeah. as much as, you know, any other profession is, you know, we were geared to be football players from the first time we put our helmets on and our cleats on. So it's been very challenging for me to find something to supplement, you know, what I left because, you know, football was everything. Football was how I was known. Football was how I was able to go to so many different communities. You know, it's, it's how people know me now. It's how uh, people know my brother Hussein, so who alhamdulillah is still playing for the Kansas City Chiefs. So going from, as I said, uh, the NFL player to a civilian life, you know, has been very difficult. But alhamdulillah for Islam, you know, I, would, I wouldn't even dare want to think, you know, what my life would be like if I didn't have Islam, if I didn't have a wife uh, who was on her dean and who would remind me of my dean, if I didn't have children who looked up to me who depended on me, who I needed to be responsible for. Um, if I didn't have parents to check in on me, if I didn't have brothers and sisters calling me, um, emailing me, making sure that I was doing okay. Because it's something, you know, it, it, it's very serious. You know, there, are, there have been six, or actually there were seven guys in 2012, former or current players that commit suicide. So it's not an easy transition, oh, yeah. um, not by a long shot. So, you know, alhamdulillah for people making dua for me and my family. Yes, um, and inshallah, you know, I can tell my story and it can help brothers after me. Inshallah ta'ala. And during your time in the NFL, you're playing with other professional athletes. And just like any of us Muslim brothers and sisters who go to school, we are with other non-Muslim or people of other faith students. Or our coworkers are right. people of other faiths. Right. So were there any moments during your career where you gave dawah to these people or they say, Wait, wh why are you praying like that? Or right. what are you reading? Right. Um, you know, the best dawah uh, is your character, the character of a person. You know, regardless of how big my beard was, even though I couldn't grow a beard, um, regardless of how many times, you know, I told them something, they would look at what I did, you know, how I interacted with not just my friends, but people I didn't know, people who could do nothing for me, you know, where whether it's, um, you know, different staff members or people who are looked at as the lowest man of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys would just disregard them, but, you know, I took it upon myself to enjoy everyone's relationship and really try to get to know everyone's name and, uh, you know, and, and savor that relationship just to say, you know, thank you for whatever it is that you do. Even if it's the guy who puts the name tags on your playbook, mm -hmm. you know, that seems like a very small job that no one really cares, but that's a big thing, you know, for someone to put your name on a playbook or put your name on something to make sure that you don't lose it and you can I quickly identify, um, but yeah, you know, we, we interact with a lot of people who are not Muslim, but I think for any Muslim who is out there who is doing anything when in regards to uh, trying, you know, thinking about, you know, am I giving enough dawah? Am I doing this or doing that? Right. You know, when you're Muslim, you live a Muslim, you, you be, you're Muslim every single day. And that's in your character and the way you treat people and, you know, just how you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. Let's say, for example, you guys just won a game. Your team won a game, and everyone is going out to celebrate. They might be going to a club. They might be going to drink. What did you do, or how did you handle that situation? It's a, it's different situations because I w I've never been a member of a Super Bowl winning team. You know, people would always ask me, you know, if they won the Super Bowl and, you know, they're spraying champagne and doing all these different things, what would you do? Well, you know, I, w I never got into that because I, w I didn't win a Super Bowl. But there were a number of times, you know, people have to realize that in the NFL, this is your job. Your job is to play football. You only see us on Sundays for three hours. But between Monday and Saturday, your entire life, everyone's life and everyone's focus is focused on that one game. Mm -hmm. So after it's done, you know, you get a big win. Guys want to celebrate. Guys want to party. And you may do the things that they do. You may not. And you just have to try to find good people around you that are like you. You know, hey, you know, let's go over Brother Hamza's house. And, you know, maybe he's going to Brother Mustafa's house or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's it really is dictated by the friends that you keep around you and the people that you keep around you. That's a, a, that's a way to stay safe. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So that a, 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 a person is on the religion, the deen, or the way of their companion. 
And I got one more question for you before we take this this next break, and that is um, Hussein, your brother, mashallah, may Allah bless and protect him and his family. Mm-hmm. Amin. He scores the touchdown, <laughs> and then he makes sajda, he makes sajood, mashallah. and this just goes viral on 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 the internet when when i was on the internet right and then they find him yes, right there what was your reaction what was going through your mind you know subhanallah i was so excited that he scored a touchdown i didn't even notice or realize that he got flagged excuse me it wasn't until later that someone said oh they flagged him for it and i'm sitting around and i'm looking flagged him for what you know excuse me they said he went down to his knees said thousands of players go down to their knees. They, they didn't flag him for going down to his knees. And then I said, wait a minute, are they flagging him for making a sajda? And, you know, I, uh, being the person that I am, try to give the referee, you know, the benefit of the doubt, saying, oh, well, maybe he didn't know what he was doing. So I was thinking that maybe they would pick up the flag. Well, they didn't pick up the flag. They continued with the flag. And then whenever you get a flag in the NFL, you have to get fined. So I'm sitting there thinking, like, wait a minute. Are they going to find my brother for making a sajda in the end zone? So, it, I mean, it went viral that night. And then the next day, the NFL kind of came out and said, you know, he was making a, a, a prayer, so we're not going to find him. And I was very thankful for that because those fines in the NFL are not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> my, my question is, he made the, he made the sajda with the helmet, right? Yes. So is it valid? <laughs> You know, but you know what? It wasn't a fart salah, so. <laughs> you know your fit. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah. With that said, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Welcome back to In the Mix with DJ Halal. DJ Halal. Mashallah. So, one of the questions I have is what was training like during Ramadan? Subhanallah, it was it was tough as you would think, but it wasn't tough because you were hungry or you were thirsty. Um, when you're fasting, everyone knows when they're fasting, you know, there's just the supreme focus because you don't have to think about you're hungry and you're tired and you're thirsty. You know, you you get a chance to focus on, you know, whatever the task is at hand. And I've actually had some of my best football games while I was fasting. Um, It goes back from when we were younger, my mother started us fasting when we were seven years old. And so by the time we started playing football and playing football competitively, our bodies were used to it. And we kind of got used to not even thinking about water and food and things like that while we were competing. Mm-hmm. So actually, so actually, while we trained, you know, we actually prepared months in advance for Ramadan. And, you know, we were the best conditioned athletes out there. And so, alhamdulillah, you know, we learned from Hakeem Olajuwon. He played in the finals while he was fasting. So, you know, we thought, shoot, if Hakeem could do it, then we can definitely do it. That's amazing. And and I've heard, I don't know if it was Hakeem Olajuwon or Sharif Abdul Rahim, mm-hmm. that they averaged more points when they were fasting. Yep. Subhanallah. That's barakah right there. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Um, any other advice or, you know, words of wisdom that you could give to the uh, Muslim brothers and sisters listening out there? I would just say live your life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to live it. You know, there's only one that you have to answer to, not one person, one. And that one is Allah azza wa jal. You know, I may do something that offends my wife, that offends my brother, that offends my sister, that offends my son. But I would never want to do anything that offends Allah azza wa jal. And know that even regardless of the worst thing that you could do, the worst thing that you could do, Allah tells you that as long as the slave of Adam comes to him and asks for his forgiveness, then Allah will grant it to you. So there's have no despair. Trust me, whatever you, you've done, you've been through, I've seen it, I've done it, I've experienced it, I've been the lowest of the low, the absolute lowest of the low. And alhamdulillah, I'm still here, I'm still in the masajid. Alhamdulillah, I'm still on this deen of Islam. Inshallah, Allah blessing me to die on this deen. Know that I am your brother. I want for my brother what I want for myself. And that is I want to be reunited with you in Jannah, inshallah. Amen. And know that my brother Hussein, my older brother Abbas, all of us, you know, we love you for the sake of Allah. And inshallah, if there's anything that we can do, just let us know. But know that Allah is with you 
and never lose hope in Allah. Subhanallah. Amin to all of the dua right there. Mashallah. Amin, amin, amin. Now it is time to play Gan in 60 <laughs> seconds. So I am going to be asking you, inshallah, as many questions as possible uh -oh. in 60 seconds. Okay. Okay. The questions range from science, geography to random trivia. Okay. okay? Get ready to pass. <laughs> you can pass. Okay. And if you get majority right, then inshallah ta'ala, what we will do is we will donate to charity on your behalf. MashaAllah. Okay. So wh what's going on? We got the timer right there. Okay. Ready, set, go. What is the Islamic term for ritual ablution? Wudu. What city do the defenders play for? Pass. In the periodic table of elements, what does CU stand for? Pass. In what country is the poet Rumi buried in? India. The term Desi represents what ethnicities? I have no idea. Pass. What elements? What element begins with K? Potassium. Shah Rukh Khan is an actor in what entertainment industry? I should never know that past. Which inventor averaged one patent for every three weeks of his life? Booker T. Washington. Name the world's biggest island. Hawaii. What explorer introduced pigs to North America? Uh, I don't know the past. Name one famous, famous, famous English-speaking poet. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe. What is the main? Oh. <laughs> I probably got three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. That was good. I had more. Let me let me just ask you for for you know for fun. There's okay. a couple. Um, what is the main color on the Chinese flag? Red. All right, there we go. <laughs> hey, give him that one. What does the C, the C in LCD stand for? That is a great question, and I used to buy a lot of TVs, but I would just, I want to say. You want to say what? LCD. Man, that stinks, because I, <laughs> my wife would hate me right now, because she'd be like, okay, all those times you went to Best Buy, what were you really doing? <laughs> Crystal, I have no idea. Crystal is correct. Oh, wow. Yeah, what is it, what's the full? Liquid crystal display. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> Brother Hamza. Okay, you probably know this. In basketball, where do the Hawks come from? Atlanta. Okay. The book, The Invisible Man, mm -hmm. was authored by who? Oh, I don't know that. And the last question is, finish the title. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hi. There it is. Mashallah. Give him all those points, man. <laughs> he made all those duas for us. Mashallah. Mashallah. With that said, Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair for listening. Back to you, inshallah ta'ala. Welcome back to In The Mix. Subhanallah. Beautiful interview. And one of the things that stuck out to me from Brother Hamza's talk was when he said that this, this transition took place from being in the NFL to becoming a, a, a regular citizen. And he knew his whole life since he put on those cleats during Pee Wee football. He was going to be in the NFL. And then he played for years in the NFL. And now he said that he wonders how life would be like if he didn't have Islam. That it's because of Islam, the deen, that he has direction. And he mentioned like, dude, like six, seven uh, former players committed suicide. They killed themselves because they didn't. They didn't. They had no, you know, direction. Obviously, there are problems, but the the beauty of Islam, and I'll admit this to myself first. A lot of times, we 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 just take it for granted. The 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 gift that we have that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he brought for us, this beautiful deen of Islam that was revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that was an amazing point that that brother Hamza made so may Allah make us grateful for this for this beautiful religion that we have Amin. 
With that said, Jazakumullah khairan, may Allah, may God give what is best to everyone who tuned in today and listen. And by the way, there is an iTunes account, okay? And I've been pushing this for a while. You can check us out on iTunes. We're on iTunes. Listen to the podcast on there. Subscribe and share. And this is on a YouTube. It's a YouTube. And Instagram. We're on Instagram, Twitter. Facebook, follow us on there, add us on there, like us on there. With that said, this is your brother in Islam, DJ H A L A L, telling you to always, always keep it halal.